Uh, welcome to Faith and Family Church, where we are living by faith and building godly families. <clears throat> Our ultimate goal is building consummate, balanced people doing good works in the community. And even as um, Pastor Rich was sharing, and I believe even as Pastor Lori was sharing, a lot of times we hear things and we get so accustomed to it, it just becomes a mundane saying because these are the things that we say in the church. But what I want you to do with conviction, I would like for you to say this after me. Say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. All right, now, I would like for you to now say with conviction and power, a sense of thanksgiving. Come on, everybody say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Let's stop right there. Why, why are you rejoicing? Why are, we, why are you rejoicing? Because what? This is what? See, just stay with the text. Just stay with the word. This is the day that God has made. Do you understand that you never saw this day? Do you understand that there are people who w w went to a party last night, went to a function last night, and they didn't wake up this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. We must rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful. I hope that you're thankful for each and every day that God has given us. Another opportunity, another day to smile and say, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. I never want to be a person who come up here and just do some stuff and then move on. I always want to do my very best to be an impact person. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask, as the old Baptist preachers used to say when I was grow up, growing up in Linden, New Jersey, uh, they would say, pray for me as I share the word. God has been putting something on my heart. Uh, but I really want you to con I really want you to pray for me because what I'm going to share about today, my topic is freedom on Juneteenth. Freedom on Juneteenth. And there's so many thoughts that are running in my mind, not just now, but this morning. Not just this morning, but late in the midnight hour. Not just late in the midnight hour, but anytime I see something on television where it seems like African American people are dealing with an injustice or even we are hurting ourselves, I always want to know, Lord, what is it that we need to do as a people? What is it that we need to do? No, it's not. The answer is not an Afrocentric gospel. That's not the answer. Because Jesus said in Matthew 28, uh, verse 18, he said to us, he said, go make disciples of some nations. He said, go make disciples of all nations. And so when you look up that word nation, in the Greek, it would tell you that nation means ethnic. Go make disciples for all ethnic groups. All. Everybody say all. all. Come on, y'all be able to say all. all. All ethnic groups. That's what we're supposed to do. But you know what? We still have to be mindful of our culture. And I believe that, and not all, so I don't want to um, generalize this statement, but it seems like in the African-American community, we're waiting for somebody 
to be another Malcolm X. We're waiting for somebody who can sit down, but on her heart she stood up. We're waiting for another Rosa Parks. We're waiting for another Martin Luther King. We're waiting for another leader to have a dream. But I have to remind you guys, every dream that God has given us is a vision for us to walk on that journey. And that if we don't learn how to walk together, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we will perish as fools. If we don't stop and start to think about how we can have some symposiums, which I will do, um, some community town meetings, which I'm planning on doing, we're going to lose a generation of young people who don't know our God. And if you remember, the children of Israel came into bondage because there was a leader who did not know, watch this, Joseph's God. Do y'all hear that? That's personal. We always waiting for somebody else to do something, waiting for the next great preacher to come. We need the evangelist. Well, Billy, uh, well, Billy Graham did his job, and he home with the Lord. Remember, the, remember this is the old, but oldie but goodie, Dr. Evie Hill. Y'all remember him? Dr. Evie Hill. Done preached his heart out. One of my favorite messages about uh, that Dr. Evie Hill did years ago was why did Jezebel go to hell? Why did Jezebel go to hell? Cliff notes. Why did she go to hell? It wasn't because she killed the prophets. It wasn't because she was an idol worshiper. But it's because she didn't repent. God is always calling us to repent so that way we can have uh, new wineskins, if you will. New wineskins, I, I, I know where this is, it's in Mark, but it talks about new wineskins and see, you can't pour new wine into old wineskin. Because if you do, the new will destroy and expand that brittle old wineskin and it will burst and you'll lose the wineskin and most importantly, you'll lose that wine. That right there is a metaphor, an allegory of us, you and I, and our mindsets and how we think. If we don't change our mind, we will not be able to change our world. Why? Because we are constantly allowing ourselves to have the old stinking thinking, but yet we expect God to pour new revelation on the inside of us. I'm talking to a people who want change. Come on, everybody say change. Oh, you better speak to me. Say change. See, freedom on Juneteenth. Here's what I'm saying to you guys. Is that he said, the Bible said that they did not know Joseph's God. In other words, Joseph had such an impact that the system respected his faith. But when Joseph died, what happened? 
Here's what happened. Somebody dropped the baton. We're in a race. And somebody dropped the baton. Somebody wasn't willing to stretch their hand out and say, I'm going to carry this legacy of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Somebody dropped the baton. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you and your family. But be a person of influence. Somebody said, well, Pastor, you don't understand because it's just so hard. I'm, I'm trying to do great things. I, I, I want to be great. I, I, it, it, but, 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 but it's hard. I, I have to get myself together. Well, here's what I want to say to you. You don't have to be great to start. But you got to start to be great. You hear what I'm saying? You got to start somewhere. Stop making excuses. You don't want to just keep coming to church warming up the pews. I love, I love for you to be here. You don't want to keep tuning in social media and flicking, watching us one, and then, then next you watching T.D. Jake, next you watching Joel Osteen, next you watch, oh, that's cool. But let me tell you something. How many ever heard this saying? Knowledge is power. Raise your hand. How many have heard saying, the mind is a terrible thing to waste? Raise your hand. Some of y'all never heard that before? Then raise your hand then. Everybody say knowledge is power. Well, even the Bible says what? A lack of the people perish because of a lack of what? Because of a lack of what? Speak back to me. A lack of what? Yes. Lack of knowledge. Now, let me share something with you because I know we have a lot of wonderful guests and I just want to share with you, right? I speak with passion. I'm excited. I ain't angry at you. I'm just mad, angry. I'm just mad at the devil. I'm mad at the devil because he's been lying to us and our people been hurting and, 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 and the world don't mind if a rapper have all types of passion then a preacher do it all of a sudden come here, ooh, 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 stop it. Take your ooh, ooh, ooh self and go out there and make a difference in the world. Do that, do me, do that for me. Because this is how God wired me. My people destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. So do you believe that knowledge is power? Yes. Huh? Do you believe? Do you believe that knowledge is power? Yes. Okay, now, why do I repeat and ask you over and over again, right? It ain't like I know y'all ain't responding, but I want you to participate with me. Because people in church, we so used to just sitting back, looking at the praise and worship, looking at the song, and we just clap a little bit. We don't learn how to participate. I want you to participate in what I'm saying. Plus, I used to coach. And one thing I know, the Bible is true. The Bible said it. And it's in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says what? Faith comes by. Yeah. Faith comes by. Yeah. Faith comes by. Yeah. Faith comes by what? By what? Yeah. By what? Yeah. By what? Yeah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, let me tell you something. This is what I want you to realize, right? I'm, I'm, I'm right on knowledge here, but this is what I want you to hear. Faith comes by hearing. So isn't it amazing? And you know, I've been wearing this, this study out, but there's some people here that never heard it before, so they'll appreciate it. Isn't it amazing that in 1975, at MIT, where some of the smartest people in the world go to school. For those who don't know about MIT, look it up. Most of y'all will Google it anyway. That the sociologists figured out something about the mind, the psyche of man. And they came this, to this conclusion. For every negative words that were said to you, it takes 10 to six, 10 to 16 positive affirmations to erase that negative thing. How many of us have been holding on to some negative stuff too long? Just raise your hand and be honest. Somebody told you something years ago. I still remember, I ain't going to say a whole name, but Margaret, if you're watching, I remember 
back in sixth grade in school number four, you called me a dog face. Oh, yes, she did. Yes, she did. I ain't going to go with her last name. I, 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 somebody said, let it go. Yeah, but y'all don't understand. I felt my, you know, when you're little and stuff, you know how it is. The first, you know, when you, you know, like you got some girls in the school, but my, well, no, it was in seventh grade. It might have been seventh grade. But Margaret was developed. You know, at an early age, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you. Can I be honest? Can I tell the truth? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? She was a um, brick. She was all that. And Brick House called me a dog face. <laughs> but I tell you what, right? Okay. Everybody say, now is his power. Okay. But I do want to say this, because I got to get this in. I can't leave it like that. So, you know, I was a little chubby kid. You know, I had a lot of confidence. I was always screwing up in school. But when I started playing basketball and start doing my little push-ups and walking around with my weight jacket and running and jogging and just start growing into my body and then start playing ball and start getting a reputation and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? By the time I was like in high school, you know, walking around with my boom box on, my goal on, my hat crooked and my boys, Margaret was trying to look at her brother. You know what, though? I didn't go tit for tat. I didn't call her dog face. I just said, what's up, poodle? <laughs> you know, pretty poodles, you know. Pretty poodles. You know, poodles look pretty, you know. <laughs> Amen. But everybody say, knowledge is power. So the study tells us that it takes at least 10 to 16 times for you to hear something positive to erase that stuff. So that's why a lot of times I keep saying, say it again, 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 to erase that. But here's the deal. This was written in the Bible over 2,000 plus years ago. God didn't need MIT. <laughs> to tell us that fact. That's how awesome the word of God is. If we start really, you know, I'm talking about myself too. I mean, I'm not even close to my greatness. If we really start taking, Brother Jackson, that word to heart and start believing what it says, Man, you walk around all day speaking the word of God over your life. I am blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. We just got finished singing a song. I'm blessed coming in and I'm what? Blessed going out. You know what that means, right? I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed coming out. That means that when I go in and I come out, God hasn't changed his mind. I'm still blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. In the midst of all my shortcomings, I'm blessed because the blood of Jesus forgives me. I'm blessed because I don't have to walk in condemnation. I'm blessed because I can go to the throne room of grace with boldness and ask God. And the Bible says, when we ask of him, he gives to us freely. I'm blessed when he tells me that I am his own. I'm blessed. So I have to start believing what God said and not what Margaret or somebody else said. Amen? Amen. Everybody say knowledge is power. Knowledge. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, you know what I discovered? You're absolutely right. But I'm going to tell you, there's a caveat to that. Is knowledge power without exercising the knowledge and applying the knowledge that you know? So is knowledge, do we stop right there by learning something? No. 
You can have a knowledge of riding a bike, but until you ride it, you're walking. Am I right about it? So here's what I want to say to y'all. We got a lot of knowledge on John chapter um, 8, verse 32. We got a lot of knowledge, y'all, as believers. We have enough knowledge right here that we can turn the state of Virginia upside down. Pastor, you're just saying that, no, there was 12 men that followed Jesus. 12 men, some of them unlearned. Peter was running around a cussing fisherman. But yet, Peter was transformed from a cussing fisherman to blessing people with the first sermon ever in Acts chapter two, 3 where 3,000 people came to know the Lord. God can take your cussing and your fussing and turn it into a blessing. You hear what I'm saying? Your ability to manipulate words and to use words and to tell people off and to make them feel real bad, guess what? The, you're just using the gift wrong. You're using the gift wrong. That's what it is, sis. You can put words together. You can make somebody feel lower than a belly of an ant. Somebody said that's low. But what happens is that if you don't understand that that gift has been given to you by God, like, like the rappers, oh Jesus, I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. Our wonderful, beautiful brothers and sisters that are out there are very talented. They just don't understand how much they are spewing poison in our young people. And our young people, ladies and gentlemen, mothers and fathers and grandfathers and, and, and uncles and aunts, we got to understand, and you got to remember, we was young. There's the issue with the music, because you can listen to music and then say, I don't go out there and kill somebody because somebody said kill somebody. But when you're young and your brain is developing, you don't have a filter. So they don't have a filter. So who's responsible? Who's responsible? I'm, I'm going to say this, and this is in me. Um, see, I remember, how many remember Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price? Dr. Fred Price, know what he used to do? When he sees somebody sleeping while he's talking and blessing the Lord, know what he do? He tell everybody to stand up. I ain't going to tell y'all to stand up. we will tell everybody to stand up so the person's sleeping, and they wake up and they look, okay, I'm sleeping, get up. Stop sleeping. I'm just saying. That's, to me, that's symbolic of we as a people. We don't sleep on Beyonce and Jay-Z. Our good movies. But what is it about spiritual things that cause you to sleep? Wake up! Is that all right? Is that all right? Okay, I appreciate y'all. Power to the people. Okay, let me move forward. Let me move forward. John chapter 8, verse 32. It says this, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if you don't know the truth, are you free? If you don't know that President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January the 1st, 1863. If you don't know that, you're not free. We got a lot of brothers and sisters. And I want y'all to love me. And I told you, just pray for me on this because this is a passion of mine. We got a lot of brothers and sisters that are out there and they don't, they don't know their God. They don't know Joseph's God. They don't know your God. How can we be all right knowing that they go into a devil's hell and living a life beneath their privileges? 
and we can raise our hands up on a Sunday and say hallelujah and God is good. Those things are true. But after you raise your hand, after you get information, after you get inspiration, after you get revelation, and then go out there and touch your brother and sister, that's what we're supposed to do. You shall know, so you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Okay, we're talking about freedom on Juneteenth. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 36. It says this. Oh, I love this. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, read the rest of it. If the Son makes you free, you shall be what? So who is the Son? Jesus is the Son, right? And what did Jesus do to make you free? Speak to me. He did what? All the all are correct. He died on the cross. But not only did he die on the cross, he did what? He rose. <laughs> huh? He didn't just die. There's a lot of good men. There's a lot of prophets. There's a lot of gurus. There's a lot of people who died for the cause. There's a lot of good men who said, I want to die for my people. And ladies and gentlemen, you can go to the cemetery and discover that their bones are still in the grave. But I'm here to remind our brothers and sisters, there ain't no bones in Jesus. <laughs> there ain't no dead bones. You hear what I'm saying? Ain't no dead bones. 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 There's not one dead bone. Because out of all of those who claim to be something, he's the only one they can't find the body. But what he did, though, this Mother Randolph, he didn't just disappear. He came back. And the Bible said, showed himself to the brethren. He came back and showed himself to over 500 people. Now, why is that number significant in the Bible? Because um, um, they, they said that you have to at least have 500 witnesses that what you said is true. And he ascended. And he said, all power. Come on, somebody. All power, <laughs> all power, all power is given to you. Stop. Stop waiting for somebody to deliver us. Stop it. Stop it, Siri. I'm been talking to you. Okay. <laughs> Come on, say it's in me. Say it's in me. What is in me? The spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit of God is in you, the word of God is in you, and the ability and talents that he's given you. Ladies and gentlemen, who the Son has made free, you are free indeed. You are free indeed. In 1776, July the 4th, you know, we signed the Declaration of Independence and we became independent from Britain, right? Let's go celebrate 4th of July. But here's what I want to say. Before there was a 4th of July, before there was an Emancipation Proclamation, before there was a Juneteenth, the Lord has set us free. Back in Genesis. That's why the book is important. The book is important. The book is important. Because in the book, you discover who you are. In the book. You discover why you're here in the book. Men, you discover because that you have purpose as a man for your household in the book. Mothers, you discover that God has purpose for you 
to nurture and build your family. Where? In the book. In the book, we discover that it's important for fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers to use that wisdom to speak to their children. So let me pause for just a moment. The grandparents want to speak to the children, but it's up to you parents to allow them to speak to the children because the issue is you have allowed the culture to mesmerize and change your mind as you develop in your education. And what I'm discovering at a young age, at 62, that all of a sudden the young people are acting like everything grandma did was wrong. Everything that granddaddy did was wrong. No, listen, take note. Number one, they utilized the knowledge and the wisdom that they had at that time. Now, I understand some things change and we evolve, but there's some fundamental principles that the word of God has for your children, has for your family. In Deuteronomy, when it tells us, have your children children, Sit down and hear the word of God. How are you going to say that ain't no more? Okay, we're not going to um, um, discipline them the way you did. Okay, I, I, could, I could even deal with that. But your kids still don't want to be running you over and doing what they're supposed to do, what they want to do. That ain't gospel. But now you're going to, now watch this, now you're going to use a reference in psychology for that. So you pick and choose what you want to do and how you want to do it. As a result, your children are missing out on some life lessons. Am I right about it? Don't take, a, listen, don't take away the voice of the elders. At least listen to them. You may not agree on everything. I understand that. But at least listen to them. Put your children in a position where they can hear from them. Are you okay? So first of all, freedom comes from who? God. Freedom comes from God. And God never designed mankind to master over another person. God designed all of us ethnic groups to work together. We are all created in his image and in his likeness. Man's responsibility is to bless God and to worship God. Man, not meaning gender, but overall. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. What did God do after Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? Watch this. Everybody says it's in the book. Come on, everybody says it's in the book. Okay, so you got to look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to understand what he did in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. What did he do in 26? He said, let us create man in our what? Own image. So who idea was it to create you? Who idea was it to create you? Wow. So you are God's idea here on the earth? Wow. That, that already makes you valuable. But guess what God did? In verse 28, he blessed them. Oh, my God. He blessed them. Everybody say, he blessed me. Come on, say, he blessed me. See, so my question to you is, how can man curse what God has blessed? But it's the voices that you hear and the people that you believe and hear that will make a difference. As the Old Testament would say, who report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. So let me just, so we got, we got this food coming up here shortly, so I got to roll, okay? Um, 
But what I want to do is I just want us on Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, we just want to reflect for a moment. So give me an opportunity just to read some things to you here. This moment, Juneteenth, it's a moment in time that not only transformed lives of millions of African Americans, but also shaped the fabric of our country and our nation. Today, we want to just dive in just a little bit deeper. We want to get education. We want to learn a little bit more about Juneteenth and what it means to us as individuals in this community. It's not just a day off. We know that President Biden already gave us a day off. But it's more than that. And all of us have to be really truthful. Most of the time, we have a day off. We ain't taking no time to read about it. We watch, a pro we watch something on TV, then we go on about our business. But I think it's important for you and I to recognize and understand the story of Juneteenth. So back in June 19, 1865, it was a major by the name of General Gordon Granger. He arrived in Galveston, Texas, and announced that all, everybody say all, all slaves were free. According to the Emancipation of Proclamation, the President Abraham Lincoln shared back in January 1, 1863. Ladies and gentlemen, how long is that? Two and a half years. Two and a half years that they were still functioning as slaves. Well, let me bring that to a spiritual connotation for just a moment. Jesus died and rose from the dead over 2,000 years ago. And there are still people in your community, in your family, at your job, in the state of Virginia, in the state of the United States, who are still living spiritually bond in bondage. Why? Because just like them, they haven't heard the news. Two and a half years Later, they heard the news. They heard the news two and a half years later from Major General Granger. And also, also the slave owners, they held the information. Who's in bondage that you know that need to hear the good news? Who in bondage did you know? Everybody that don't know Christ. That's right. Thank you, sir. And so here's what I want to say. Listen, I love singing, jumping up and down. I love clapping my hands. I love doing my dance. But I, 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 I can't just constantly be doing this at age 62, and then 20 years later, we still got the same people with the same results, still sitting on their blessed assurance, not making a decision to make a difference in their community. All that, do it. But after you finish, go out there and be the salt of the earth and be the light of the world. We got people dying. We got girls that don't understand their worth. We got boys who think they're dogs. We got fathers who want to be cool, walk around showing their drawers. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I know y'all seen it too. I mean, you're young. I'll give you a little pass because you're in your moment. But, man, come on, bro. After 25, pull them up. <laughs> Get a job. Pull them up. We know you matching. We know you, we, you, know, you got the Tommy Hilfiger drawers. You know, like that, you know. With the big stains, Calvin's and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. My name is Calvin, and you don't see my drawers. <laughs> Everybody say, pull it up. Pull them up. Just, just pull them up, bro. Just pull them up. But let me move on. But the news arrived two and a half years later after the original de declaration. Can you imagine waiting for that long for your freedom? 
This day, ladies and gentlemen, talking about Juneteenth, talking about Freedom Day, it signifies, it points, excuse me, it marks a significant point in our history, not African-American history, American history. Don't you limit what God is doing and freeing us to say this black history only? The only reason why we call it black history really is because they didn't allow us to brag about it, so we had to designate a month and say February is Black History Month. Now, I don't even know if y'all even thought about this. Do you know that out of all the months in the year, February got the least days? Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> out, of all of, out, of all of, out of the 12 months, February, 27 days. Somebody said that ain't right. Right, but I'm saying is we don't limit ourselves to just those how that day. But we have to understand that in this, it holds a lesson for us to talk about it, have dialogue with people. It shows the patience and the resilience of those way back in the day. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewings of your mind. See, Juneteenth represents a transformation. June 10th represents new wine skin. June 10th represents new wine, new wine in new wine skin. June, um, June 10th represents a mind change and shift. June 10th represents dialogue and conversation. Not just a vacation off one day. What I want to do is i um, just going to move forward here. There's a couple of things that I want to share with you on June 10th. June, June, excuse me, Juneteenth, 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 Juneteenth. To observe June 19th. Here's some things that we need to know about it. Several reasons why this day is so important. And I'm looking to close with this. I'll give you seven things. E emancipation. Emancipation. We got to really understand what that means. Emancipation, Juneteenth, marks the day when the last enslaved African American in Galveston, Texas, were informed of their freedom by Union troops two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. And it signified the end, ladies and gentlemen, of one of the most darkest periods in American history. Parents, you need to be talking to your children about it. If you feel you don't have information, if you're, you're, then let the grandparents talk to them about it. They got these phones and these iPads, they're on them all the time. Well, listen, I ain't mad at you, however you want to do it. But listen, take time, a half an hour. Hey, we're going to sit down and we're going to learn about Juneteenth. If you don't know about it, read about it. Y'all you, you, you hear what I'm saying? Because here's the deal. If you, if you don't teach them, if you don't teach them, their education is either here by their own volition or they're going to go to school, and, a, and, and, and the school is going to teach them that, it, okay, at some point in time, your precious daughter, Betty, want to be Billy. And, I mean, this is what's going on in, your, in the school. So, you know, y'all can say I'm trying to be funny or mean. I'm just telling you what it is. It's an identity crisis that we're dealing with in the world. It's an identity crisis. And I'll just say this, this is a thought. I will never try to make fun of someone who's dealing with an identity crisis such as a transgender person, male or female. But what we have to realize is that outside of what you wear on the outside, still the way God has made you 
on the inside, all the intricacies that he's created and your emotions is still that. So you could, you could, be, a, you could be born a female and die Joey and when you stand before God, God sees you as a female. Because what you have on the outside, that's not really the situation. And so we live in a changing world, and a lot of things are changing and going on, and technology is moving so fast. But one thing I want you to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that a pussycat will never produce an egg. You'll figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> Y'all understand that? Regardless of what it looks like on the outside. Mm -mm. Everybody say Juneteenth. Okay. No, another thing we need to do is recognize recognition of African American history and the contribution that we have made in this society. Juneteenth celebrates the contributions and achievements of African Americans. It and it's time to highlight the rich heritage, the rich culture, the significance in our role here in our nation. Once again, it's not to divide, but it's to educate our people of who we are. Because once you start educating yourself, you begin to feel good about yourself. Your children be able to feel good about themselves. And they can have confidence when they go out there in the world and let the Lord be their confidence. Juneteenth is about education and awareness to serve as an educational and, in, in, in a, in a, and, and to enlighten our young people and each other. There's some things we don't know that we need to know. It reminds us of our past. It stimulates conversation. I, uh, my wife and I went to a birthday party um, on Friday and I had an opportunity